Okay, executives, who's ready for the? How is that even possible? Sam and Run returns to Splatoon 3 better than ever due to the fact that it's no longer time locked and you're given the ability to huck eggs. Basically, you shut your brain off to the lore implications and hop on a heli with four set weapons to drop down into the current rotations map that hopefully isn't spawning grounds to fill a bunch of freaks with ink. But it's different than Turf War because the ones you're filling with ink are NPCs and wait, no, I guess that's not enough of a difference. These creatures are mindless. No, brain did. Mm. They're salmons. You, you can't fight salmons in Turf War. Yet. Hordes of enemies will constantly spawn to try and heck you the F up for setting foot in their territory. The masses consist of the normal chum, a fetty cohawk, and small fries. Yeah, exactly. You know, little buddy? Now you get to kill his family. Lesser salmonoids are very straightforward in the sense they move straight forward towards you and smack you. Not incredibly terrifying, but of course, even a single chum can technically one-shot you when it lands a lucky shot and pushes you off the map or into danger. We call that getting tennised. Tennis! The real threat comes from the normal bosses. These guys spawn frequently and generally have some sort of gimmick. Downing these baddies nets you golden eggs, which is how you beat each wave. Once the timer is depleted, if you haven't hucked enough eggs in your basket, you lose. And if you play with randoms, you're probably gonna see this happen a lot. Each game consists of three waves. After a wave is complete, you get jumped back to start, revived, and are given a bit of time to prep. Do not spend this time squid bagging or spamming booyah, and instead be sure to recover as much turf as you can. It's also a good rule of thumb to paint walls whenever possible to provide escape later. Wiping on the first or second will cause you to lose rank, and wiping on the third keeps it even. Because of this, it's smarter to use specials and dicey moments rather than hoarding them for the hardest wave. The specials in your pocket won't soften the blow of a demotion. Every now and then you'll get gimmick waves, which are signified by things getting dark. It is always a tense moment because most are praying for one of the free rounds such as Tornado or Gushers, but of course they can get something nastier. I tend to see Rando struggle with Grillers. It's a wave that only spawns a unique enemy and hordes of small fry. The Grillers can only be damaged by hitting an exposed point in the back. Once it takes enough damage, it'll stop, expose more points, and be able to die. Most tend to ignore the small fry when in reality, you should have a specific weapon such as a roller exclusively focused on smacking children. Laser sights indicate who the griller is aiming for, so a high ground that forces the griller to turn is generally key since it will give your teammates an opening to attack the vulnerable area. When the children are put to bed, the babysitter can focus on carting eggs to the basket, assuming they aren't targeted. The other hell send, of course, being glow flies, or as I like to call it, a big fat L with randos. This wave is incredibly difficult to win in solo queue due to the lack of communication. Essentially, whoever has glowflies surrounding them gets to experience being a streamer at TwitchCon, as an energized wave of freaks will relentlessly stalk and attack you. They do run faster than you, so it's smart to find a position on a wall or behind a roller gently nudging forward to create a death plane, while your team thins out the horde. You need to hold strong and stick together. Spreading out will generally cause missteps and wipes. Do not hesitate to use specials, especially the inkjet and wave breaker in this mode. Most of getting good in Salmon Run is knowing how to use your weapons and specials effectively, and knowing which enemies to prioritize. There are 11 normal bosses, some pretty simple and others are Satan incarnate. To start off, we have the Bag Brain, who attacks by vomiting into his mouthpiece to fill up a balloon in his head, which will then chuck at whoever got closest to him first. Shooting the balloon while it fills will cause a backfire and immediately drop him. Normal shots in the body don't do anything, but he can be damaged by specials like Killer Whale. Green Volvagio will chase after the nearest target and provide a rain wall of sorts to his fellow fishies. He'll quickly drop as soon as you hit the driver in the back a few times. Taking him out is pretty important during high tides since they'll wind up taking up half the map. They are also so deceptively tall and can tap you even when using a booyah bomb or inkjet. Ah, craps! We'll stay submerged and lock on to whoever is closest during spawn or after an attack. A circle will indicate when and where they are attacking, and you can pretend a bomb is Taco Bell and give them a stomach ache for an easy pop. Potheads are those kids that climbed on a pile of trash and hucked rocks at people going by, but in the Splatoon universe, rocks are stingray lasers. You can't attack the kid directly and instead need to knock off all the pots to cook them alive. These are a major target. If you see or hear one, find it. Shut it down. Multiple potheads can ruin a wave in seconds. Rapid fire weapons or blasters are best for eliminating them. Drizzle me timbers are more mobile metars hiding under their umbrella Ella Ella. It can be pierced by whales and shot from underneath. They'll shoot out a balloon which can be knocked back for an insta-kill if aimed correctly. Failure to remove the balloon will call forth a green shower. They can be attacked after the shot, just be sure someone gets rid of the shower summons. If there aren't other high priority targets up, it's good to get these guys out of the way since the rain can be a nuisance. The Uber driver is super friendly and will drive right up to your house, which should be by the basket, and wait for his tip after you knock on his windshield. The tip is death. Twitter stick will drill into the earth and rapidly start spewing their opinions all over your feed. You can paint up the side to climb and shoot, but blasters and splatlings can deal with them from the ground. If you are on top of that disco stick, just be wary that oh craps can swim up too. Flippadip doesn't want to play rank, so it makes a quick turf war game. Beat them in that to knock off their helm and more often than not kill them there. In the off chance you don't, they can be killed in the air without their helm. Hey, every- 
It's him! The number one rated Samonoid 2022. These big shots will drop head cannon and start firing off feel good vibration. A kin to Wave Race 64. These the body positivity units take a Kungadero load of damage to drop. Drop. You need to focus, need to focus, need to focus, need to focus. Plus, as a limited time offer, the big shots head cannons can be used to launch excellent opportunities T towards your. Why aren't you putting them in? Why aren't you putting them in? One of the most important bosses is the Slammin' Lid. He will define your team's abilities. If your team immediately drops them, congrats, you're probably gonna lose. These guys hover over an area and spawn lesser salmonoids while also absorbing projectiles. If you swim under them, they will drop after a moment in an attempt to crush you. Normally, you can hop on and counterattack, but the kicker is the drop. It kills enemies too. On certain maps, it's actually smart to use them as tower defense and instantly delete enemies that aren't always vulnerable. Granted, if you are already overwhelmed, it's fine to use them as a vantage and then remove them. And finally, Satan. Satan is a little turd and a flying turd that shoots off other turds. Equipped with special booster, this crapper will crap out 10 missiles every 10 seconds or so to give the reflux a run for its money. To drop him, you need to use bombs on both of his missile carries. And of course, it's very difficult to know which side a random teammate will be throwing towards. So generally all four players throw on the same side and you have to fumble around waiting for them to attack again. Not to mention the launchers have like weird collision and a lot of times your bombs will just drop out. They can be destroyed by killer whales though and also anything with bomb properties. Destroy them as soon as you hear them. It is important to note though that you don't always have to kill enemies right where you find them. It's sometimes smarter to let bosses follow you towards the basket so you can dispose of them then and there and deposit eggs without any hassle. This kind of brings me to weapon rolls. A lot of people don't seem to know how to play certain weapon types or any special properties that specific weapons have. For instance, did you know the Explosher has bomb properties? Meaning a single attack can destroy one of Satan's wings or damage mud mouths. Others also tend to use the dynamo roller like how everyone in turf war uses it by flinging constantly. Whereas the damage from it is so high you can one shot Kohux just by rolling. Meaning it's best to just play cleanup and get rid of the ads while teammates focus bosses. In that regards too, sometimes you gotta assume the role of egg carter. If you have something like a normal shooter with a splatling and a charger on your team, let them kill bosses from a vantage point while you collect and transport eggs. Otherwise you get a ton of waves like I did with the bamboozler on spawning ground where our charger just kept running into waves and dying again and again. I lost so many points there. I hate spawning ground so much. Specials are key. You won't always know what's ahead, but certain specials can make difference between an L and a W more often than not. Despite mentioning it a lot, Killer Whale is actually incredibly lackluster outside of the piercing property. It's generally just used as a I don't want to deal with this special. Booyah Bomb has pierce and bomb properties, but should kind of just be used as a revive all last player standing kind of spell. Triple Ink Strike can kill Mudmouths and has decent Decent res properties, but being unable to swim can put you at a disadvantage when using it. Reef Slider's bait. Use it to escape situations, not jump into them. Crib is pretty great. You get some armor, heavy attack power, and the alt fire has bomb properties, meaning it can kill Satan. Following that, Inkjet is mostly used to get some breathing room, but the projectiles have the same bomb properties. They don't go incredibly far, though. The best and probably most important special is the Wave Breaker. It clears out hordes, does decent damage, but is insane at resurrecting fallen allies. Not only that, but if you throw it down right before you die, you can actually revive yourself because God knows you can't rely on your teammates for that. You are given two specials each game, be sure to use them. Preferably not both in round one, but as mentioned earlier, it's better to waste specials and die to wave three then hoard them and die earlier. And finally, the new addition, the extra wave. Once enough players have filled a gauge by doing multiple rounds of salmon run, there's a chance a fourth wave will trigger. When this happens, the super boss Big Kahuna will show up. You'll have 100 seconds to deal a lot of damage to this lordly lad. Your egg launcher becomes the egg cannon, allowing you to fire off golden eggs as an attack. For free! It does not take ink, I repeat, it doesn't take ink! If you see a pile of eggs, you fire them off back to back. Obviously, you should be pelting coho, but a good rule of thumb is to shoot two eggs and then keep the third. A lot also don't know that you can attack normal bosses with golden eggs, meaning you can turn that third egg into three more. It'll one-shot a lot of them, but if you require a couple more taps. Chungli will follow whoever is closest to him, which should be whoever has the highest DPS weapon. Their role is not to kill bosses or even grab eggs, but instead just unload onto him. It's always a safe bet to put the splatling in that role if you have one, especially if it's the heavy splatling. Everyone gets one special, and if you get crib, you should just use it to deeps the big boy. He'll mostly flop around and periodically do a cannonball. When he does, be sure to refill ink if you are on DPS duty. You can only ever get 13 scales from it, and these are determined by your difficulty, his remaining HP, 
and the remaining time. But the rates are absolutely awful, and I've gotten more silvers and golds on losing against him, whereas victories often just results in bundles of bronze. Scales can be used to purchase a lot of trash you don't want in order to unlock more stuff. Seriously, you can't unlock things without spending X amount of gold, silver, and bronze. Want a blue slop suit? Well, you need to have 20 silver spent and then save up another 30. Once you are done getting mad at that stupidity, you can cash in your points for hats. Thousands and thousands of hats! So playing Salmon Run is actually a great way to earn dosh and chunks for regular Splatty 3. At the time of this video creation, there are only three maps which kind of sucks because Spawning Grounds is basically time locking the mode again unless you exclusively want to lose with randoms. I'm sure more maps are coming and the rumored big run should be happening soon, which is apparently going to have Salmon Run take place on Turf War maps, so that'll be interesting. On top of that, there's rumblings for a new super boss and exclusive weapons that'll be available during the all random rotations. It's very important you learn what each weapon in a regular rotation does, as well as how you should be playing it. I am still upset at how many people I saw throw bombs into Satan with the Explosher. To this day, I'm still confused how some people get to the higher ranks. You can be popping off and dropping foes left and right, but once a little Timmy logs on, he'll be sure to die 10 times in two waves and never use specials or weapons correctly. Your rank is determined by your entire team's performance. None of that metal stuff from Anarchy applies here. You either all succeed or all fail. So please, for everyone's sake, get good. If you have any other tips that I'm sure I missed, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video and want to see more Splat stuff, uh, sub, okay, bye.